did I choose to watch this? Given the sheer volume of new manga adaptations, sequels, and original anime releasing every day, it's easy to see how new shows are buried under the tidal wave of content. By the midpoint of every season, it feels like everyone's already settled on their watch list, leaving no room for the more slept on shows. And for those of us that are trying to catch up on the classics in addition to watching the seasonal anime, well, I hope you don't like having a social life. Being aware of this sad reality, I should not have been surprised that the original net animation Artist Switch would have little to no following. I mean, it's an obscure show with no notable names attached to it. When trying to find information about the show, I discovered that these were the only projects the director has ever contributed to. I personally only found Artist Witch because Giga, one of my favorite music producers, created a track for the first episode. I mean, let's face it, when you're up against shows like Aquatope, Remake Our Life, and the peak fiction that is Girlfriend Girlfriend, you're not going to give a show that looks like this a chance. I'm pretty sure Artist Witch runs in a buttery smooth 24 frames per second. I actually even noticed parts where characters' mouths only opened after they were completely done speaking. However, since I saw the episode are being posted on YouTube and have a mere 8 minute runtime, I decided to give the show a shot. And I'm glad I did. I could have spent 24 minutes worse, like, for example, watching an episode of X-Arm. While the show has its flaws, it's an interesting project that left me thinking about the deeper meaning and themes behind each episode. I'm not gonna act like this show's the next Neon Genesis Evangelion. Trust me, I'd never even try to tackle an anime with subjects as complex as Ava. But with a cryptic name like Artist Witch, where it can be read as Artist Witch, Artist Switch, Art I Switch, you know there's gonna be more beyond the surface. So while I will be discussing the plot of the first four episodes, the best parts of Artist Switch originate from the visuals and the music found within. Because of this, you're safe to watch this video both before or after watching the series. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are some indirect references to self-harm in chapter 4 of this video, so skip over that section if you're sensitive to those types of things. Anyways, enough chit chat. What actually is Artist Witch and what does it all mean? The premise of the show is simple. Nina is a young witch with the ability to grant the wishes of her customers by asking if they want to peer deeper into their souls. What is her purpose for doing this? What is the significance of the cash register shown at the beginning and end of each episode? Why the f*** does the chameleon talk like this? I don't know. Doesn't matter. We're moving on. The first customer of Nina's is a dancer named Haruka. He's a hands- up. Oh, nope, wait, that's a girl. However, her friend does say, I would definitely date you if you were a guy. Which like, what? Isn't that a really weird thing to say to your friend? Like, if I went up to my friend and was just like, I would really date you if you were a girl, wouldn't that be weird? You know what, you know what, you know what? Let's just try it. Let's, let's see what happens. I'm gonna call Tilio. He might be sleeping. I'm recording this at midnight. Hello? Hey. Hey, so I've been thinking about our friendship a lot lately. If you were a girl, I, I would probably date you. <laughs> What are what are your what are your thoughts on that? Okay, bye. You know what? That went well. I should tell more of my friends that. Anyways, when she enters Nina's shop, she is immediately drawn to a tube of red lipstick. However, when Nina asks if she likes the makeup, Harka hesitates and responds by saying, it's not like me. Throughout her dancing career, people have been telling her what is more like her, pointing her in the direction of a more strong, handsome person. Nina then challenges this mentality, asking her what being like her even is. We then peer deeper, get a fantastic breakdown courtesy of Giga, then bam, she rediscovers herself, learns that it's okay for her to act more feminine, and begins living life as her true self. The next couple of episodes follow a similar pattern. Episode 2 tells the story of Mana, a girl who forms a perfect trio with her two identical sisters. While she lives the double life is a more dark, angsty musician, this side of her is a lot less successful on social media. This one was a little on the nose with the messaging, but yeah. Nino grants her wish, and she decides to make her debut as an even more angsty Billie Eilish. And despite the smaller audience and her sister's disapproval, she's finally happy with the content she creates. Episode 3 was probably my least favorite episode, but that's also just because I hate the main character. <laughs> He's just incredibly unlikable. He reminded me of those anime watchers that'll claim that some anime from 1989 is their favorite anime of all time just because they know it has a niche audience. Like, dude, we get it. You think you're better and smarter than everyone else. I'll never understand how someone becomes the type of person that does this. To be fair, this is the main issue addressed by Nina, who roasts the sh out of him for his clown ass outfit. He's trying so hard to be different, he's ultimately failing in his passion of becoming a fashion designer entirely. After his very colorful fever dream, he ultimately learns to become less of an anti-conformist and begins designing more socially acceptable clothing. At least he has a redemption arc, I guess. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, it's an anime about chasing your dreams. Been there, done that. But there's a lot more to this ONA than just that. It ends up taking a much darker and unexpected turn in episode 4, more on that later, but it tackles all of its themes in a unique way. A lot of storytelling is packed into each 8 minute episode, and the majority of it is not done through dialogue. In fact, the 916 words I fit into this script so far 
far are probably more than all of the words that are said in the entire series. Instead of using dialogue to directly tell us what's going on, the show utilizes each pure deeper segment as an opportunity to look into each character's consciousness through trippy, lucid dream-esque visuals. I initially dismissed the CGI as being a lazy budget constraint, but it seems like the majority of the animator's time and energy went into these pure deeper segments instead. While it doesn't take a genius to decipher most of the messaging, these are a fun way to delve into each character's psyche. As I discussed in the summer anime video, I've been thinking a lot about what it means to truly pursue your passions. In addition to the personal and financial struggles of chasing your dreams, this show also introduces societal pressure into the mix. While it's incredibly difficult to bet on yourself when financial stability is in question, it's even more difficult to do it when you have family and friends telling you you're crazy for doing what you want to do. While most of my friends and family have been extremely supportive of my YouTube journey, a large reason I didn't start earlier is because I was scared of failing publicly. Shows like this remind me that I need to continue fighting and avoid settling for something else just because it's the safer bet. Making stuff for you guys is something I want to do long into the future, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make that happen. Which is also why I would appreciate it if you dropped the sub. It really helps me out. So, beautiful story with a great message, right? Tied up with a nice bow at the end? Well, not exactly. The show begins to take a much darker path in episode 4. We're introduced to a new character who is dead set in what she likes and doesn't like. I don't think we ever get her name, so I'll just call her Goth Lolita, or Goth for short. This girl is extremely unsettling. Given that the list of things she hated included people, school, and home, and the things that she liked included high places, you get a good idea that things are not going great for Goth. This girl is so creepy, she bugs out Nina. If you're freaky enough that you scare a witch, you're doing some strange stuff. Unlike the other customers, she's actually the one to ask the witch to allow her to peer deeper. And the dream is, uh, weird. She gets put into a Candyland-esque world and slowly tears it apart using her umbrella. Goth is essentially tearing down the world as she knows it, as she's sick of all the noise. She was clearly not in a great mental state, and Nina's now concerned. It's clear that her wish was not a healthy one, and the darkness now completely engulfs her. But at this point, it was already too late. Goth thanks Nina for granting her wish, closes her umbrella, and Nina comes out at the other side crying. It is at this point that Nina realizes she's unable to control the wishes she grants. This outcome was a far cry from the happy endings of the previous episodes, and the ONA ends on a rather disturbing note. This episode really upset me when I first watched it. Given that my takeaways for the show up until this point were that it was good to fulfill your wishes and follow your dreams, this was a rude awakening. It's a cautionary tale, warning us that it's not always healthy to have your wishes granted. Whether it's because you're unaware of what's good for yourself, or you're just in a negative mental state, it could be destructive to gain what you want. So, does this mean that you and I should just give up on our dreams entirely? Nah. No. I don't think so. Rather, it's important to incorporate a healthy perspective into all of this. We gotta make sure that what we wish for isn't just a positive change, but will also lead to long-term happiness. An office job is great, and it would make me happy. But you know what would make me even more happy? Being able to make content for you guys full-time. I've been trying to tell myself the advice I told you guys during my summer anime video. While you're young, bet on yourself. While it might not work out, it's far easier to fail when you're younger and have less responsibility. You'll never know until you try. Art of Switch is one of those anime that no one will remember in, well actually, no one's ever heard of it in the first place. And that's the unfortunate reality of every fiercely competitive anime season. There's gonna be shows that are forgotten. The fifth episode is airing the same day I post this video, meaning there'll be even more to unravel about the series after I upload this. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the series and seeing where it goes. If I had to guess, it'll delve more into the ideas presented in episode 4 and the effects of that on Nina. Since that's all I have for you for now, I'll leave you with the challenge. Go watch Artist Witch or another anime that no one's talking about, because you never know when you'll find that next sleeper hit. And with that, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya!